Thomas Jefferson viewed his presidency as a new revolution. Though a bit arrogant, he actually sought to give more power directly to the American people and cut back on the size and powers of the federal government, while still ignoring and even perpetuating slavery. But was he able to stay true to this revolutionary vision once in office? Well, that's the treasure we're out to discover. I'm Dan Luer, and this is History for Humans. Before we get going, I just want to remind teachers and homeschool parents that there are lesson plans and resources that go with this episode on my website, historyforhumans.com. And now, our exploration question for today's lesson is, did Thomas Jefferson stay true to his principles as president? So focus on that and umbrellas out because I got some history to rain upon you. In the election of 1800, Thomas Jefferson defeated John Adams, but actually ended up tying with the man who was supposed to be his vice president, Aaron Burr, sir. Due to the tie, the House of Representatives would get to decide the presidency, and they were split and deadlocked. But then, the most unlikely of men came to Jefferson's aide, Alexander Hamilton, who had been his political rival for the past 12 years. And Hamilton persuaded Federalists to vote for Thomas Jefferson, since Burr, sir, could not be trusted. Even if Hamilton hated Jefferson's principles, he did. At least he had principles, unlike Burr, sir. Though in his private life, Jefferson was fabulously wealthy, gaining riches off the backs of hundreds of enslaved people, as president, he embraced the common folk and citizens and sought to represent them directly. He demonstrated this right away. Rather than riding in a majestic horse-drawn carriage to his inauguration, Jefferson instead walked in plain clothes as a common citizen to the Senate chambers to be sworn into office. Afterwards, in his speech, he tried to unify the country after the bitter campaign. In his low and weak voice, he stated, we are all Republicans, we are all Federalists. A unifying sentiment, but once in office, he went to work securing his vision for the nation. To shrink the size of government, Jefferson laid off many government workers and cut taxes. He actually removed all internal taxes, including the despised whiskey tax, while still paying off the national debt. He reduced the size of the army and navy as well, keeping the government rigorously frugal and simple. You see, he wanted to remove all the fancy pageantry surrounding the presidency to break away from any resemblance of a monarch and replace them with Republican simplicity. And that brings us to our quiz flash from the past. So to make the presidency more simple and less like a monarch, which of the following would you guess was true of Jefferson's presidency? He invited common farmers to stay in the White House. He ate only porridge and soup to save food costs. He received the British minister in his pajamas, or he hosted boxing matches on the White House lawn. Ever have pajama day at school? Well, even as a teacher, I always felt awkward wearing them, but TJ would have loved it. So get this, Jefferson astonished and shocked a British minister by greeting him in his slippers, a nightcap, and PJs. The minister took it as an insult, but it was just TJ being TJ, keeping it simple. And Jefferson also believed that the Constitution must be interpreted strictly, meaning the government could do only what was precisely written in the document. Whereas Federalists like Hamilton believed the Constitution must be interpreted loosely to give the federal government expanded powers to do what was necessary for the good of the nation. 
However, Jefferson was about to find out that it's far easier to argue the government should be limited when your opponents hold power, and far harder to resist those powers once you gain control. In 1800, much of America's commerce flowed down the Mississippi River into the port at New Orleans, which was then controlled by the French under Napoleon Bonaparte. And Napoleon had the United States by the jugular. So Jefferson sent James Monroe to France with instructions to purchase the city for $6 million. Napoleon, though, who was strapped for cash and at war with Britain, offered not just New Orleans, but the whole Louisiana Territory for $15 million. For about three cents an acre, Jefferson could double the size of the United States, but there was one little problem. Nowhere in the Constitution did it give Jefferson the power to do this. Believe me, he checked. So he had to compromise on his political beliefs. He had to embrace a Hamiltonian vision of the Constitution to secure the Louisiana Purchase. Worth it! Jefferson then commissioned his private secretary, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark to explore the newly acquired lands. From 1804 to 1806, Lewis, Clark, and the Corps of Discovery became an epic exploration and scientific mission that cataloged the plants and wildlife of the region, opened trading relations with numerous Indian nations, and mapped the lands from St. Louis to the Pacific. Americans would soon hungrily spread into those lands, and so too would slavery. So while those lands provided independence and opportunity for scores of white Americans, it further entrenched and expanded slavery while driving out numerous Indian tribes as well. It's a contradiction that's central to both America's and Jefferson's story. The move though was hugely popular and Jefferson was re-elected in 1804 where more serious troubles awaited. European conflicts had come crashing into Washington's, Adams, and now Jefferson's presidency. Once again, American ships on the Atlantic were being seized by both the British and French navies. Particularly outrageous was the British practice of impressing American sailors when they forced American sailors into service for the Royal Navy. Then, in 1807, the British fired upon the USS Chesapeake, killing three and wounding many more. The nation clamored for war, but Jefferson looked to avoid an expensive and costly conflict. Instead, he hoped to use peaceful means to force the British and French to respect American shipping rights. Jefferson called on Congress to pass the Embargo Act, closing off all American exports. Because without American grain, Jefferson believed the British and French would be forced to come to terms. But it failed, and miserably so. It only brought ruin to the American economy, merchants in New England, and poor farmers as well. Jefferson was accused of being a tyrant, cracking down on the freedoms of the American people. But just before Jefferson left office, Congress repealed the hated Embargo Act. So as president, Jefferson cut taxes, kept the nation at peace, shrank the government while doubling the size of the country, but he was not always able to hold true to his vision of a simple federal government with limited powers. But his vision still continues to impact the country and our politics today. Because remember that history is the light that guides us forward. So thanks for learning some today. This has been History for Humans.